Yo dudes, what's up? This is Planet Keith, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to be doing a bit of messing about with my 3D printer because I've broken it. <laughs> um, I'm going to be changing the hot end. So I'm probably exaggerating when I say I've broken it. It's um, it's just the uh, the hot end heating block is is a bit gunked up, and this happened like yesterday. I was trying to print something, and um, it decided that it was going to go into spaghetti mode, and you know, produced this, uh, which um, has resulted in the nozzle and the heating block being completely covered in black PLA. It's not good. And then I thought, well, I can probably clean that off with um, a brass brush. So I got busy with that and I've, I've wrecked it. This, um, whatever this is that's wrapped around it, I've ripped it and um, not looking good. So I ordered a new one on Amazon yesterday. Anyway, let's um, take this to bits and show you what's happened with the old one. So first of all, we just need to unscrew the, uh, this shroud. And um, when you're doing this, make sure it's switched off and unplugged. And there's the hot end and it's heat sink. And that's held on by two more screws. So you can see here what a complete total mess I've made of this thing. All of that black stuff is, is melted plastic and all this around here and on the nozzle. Um, this tape, I, I, w I was worried at first because I thought it might be like um, some kind of electrical coil winding. I don't know why it would be, but I don't know that much about 3D printers, so. Right, I found out what the uh, mysterious wrapping was around the, the hot end thing. Um, it turns out it's insulation. Um, and so I got some. Uh, and it's a pack of 10, which indicates that this might be a short life product. So we've got this fibrous pad, uh, which gets described as insulation cotton, but actually I think it's, uh, it's some kind of um, ceramic fiber because cotton would just burn. And it's backed with this yellow stuff, which is capped on tape, which sounds like something out of a Superman movie. And there's also a little roll of the tape and basically what this does is, well, it insulates the, the hot end from everything else because you don't want the heat going everywhere. You don't want it going up the heat sink and melting the filament too soon. And you don't want it going radiating down onto the piece you're trying to print because it'll, it'll radiate heat onto that and, and deform it as you're trying to print it. I know, I've tried it. <laughs> so uh, that's that. And then the other thing is the actual hot end and heat sink kit. I've got this one from Winsin. It's got quite good reviews, not many of them. So it comes in this titchy little box. You get this bag full of bits and you get this pretty cable thing. These all have to be connected into the motherboard, which is a bit daunting. Anyway, let's have a look at the, um, the bag full of metal bits and see what we get. So we've got two heat sinks with different bores for different filament diameters. A titanium alloy heat break. The heater block. A connector for the Bowden tube. Assorted screws. One stainless steel nozzle. And one brass. Okay, so the first thing is the Bowden tube connector. Yeah, the threaded end goes into the screws into the heating block. So I've got a teeny weeny Allen key. Yeah, that does it. And uh, pop the heat break in and screw that in. So that's like that. And then these long screws hold it together. Okay, well, that actually only goes in one way and it looks like it's <laughs> the opposite way to what I thought. Anyhow, so there's the new assembly, <laughs> not not fully assembled, because I think before I fully assemble it, I'm going to have to put the insulation on this um, on the heater block because there's not a lot of room 
to get it through once uh, once you've screwed it all together. So then the insulation can go around those and then I can just try and wrap that in tape. Doesn't seem to be very sticky this tape. That's kind of it. I'll, I'll need to you know use quite a bit more because round about there is where the uh, the hole for the nozzle is. So there it is and the bright sparks among you will have noticed that uh, that's a fail because um, I've got no screw heads. <laughs> so that's coming off. We will try a different approach. There we go, this might work. So what I've done here is uh, I've just screwed the two parts together. So, you know, the cold, cold brake, heat brake is going through the insulation. And now I'll screw it together. Okay, lovely jubbly. So now I can fix the nozzle on. Easier said than done. I may need to figure out a way to punch a, a bigger hole through that. Okay, I've done it. I used the pointy half of an eyelet to do that. That's cool. It's not in the middle though. <laughs> but now I should be able to get the nozzle in. Looking good. And now I'll just tidy up these ends and tape it. Now I need to pop the heating element in from this side because that's how it's aligned on the original. And uh, so that just pops in there. There's another teeny, teensy little grub screw in there. All right. And okay, and the last bit for this part of the operation is to fix the thermistor. There's a little hole on the heater block and the thermistor um, bead needs to go inside that and then you screw around the cables to hold it in place. Right, the exciting stroke scary bit. We need to disconnect all this and uh, its connections to the motherboard which is in here and then reconnect the new hot end. Woohoo! We've got four cables from the, the heating element that are going to be replaced uh, but we're keeping the blue and yellow and red and black fan cables. We need to open up the casing. It's held on by three hex bolts. Two at the front, one at the back. <laughs> Taking care not to disconnect the fan. And then we've got the two cables from the heating element which are both the same colour so I don't think they have polarity. And right at the end we've got the two thermistor cables and down the side here we've got a big blob of hot glue just to make things more difficult. So now I'm going to try and thread the uh, the old thermistor th through uh, and I'm doing it from, from this end with that, that connector block so I've got something to grab hold of. Right here it is and I have to say that was approximately a million times easier to do than I thought it would be. So that's a cheering, cheery bit of news for a Sunday morning. Right, let's plug that in. I'm not even going to attempt to hot glue it because there is no room. And then we'll fix on the other end. Now I'll just fix the um, hot end assembly on with one screw. So we can do a quick test to make sure everything's working. Okay, both fans just whiz round. That's a good sign. Let's, let's see if we can uh, get some heat into the nozzle. Okay, so set on 100, increasing to... Uh, right, the same... Well, it's going crazy again. It's going up to 158, 164. Lally, lally, la. And I'm switching that off and going out for a bit. Right, I've had another go and um, this time I set it to 185. So it went whiz, whiz, whiz up to something like 240 on the display. And then it came down and down and down until it reached uh, 185 and then it stopped. But then it went back up to 187 and then back down to 184. And it's now going up and down between those two. So I'm just going to 
half reassemble it and uh, try and print something and see what happens. Preheated it and the nozzle is indicating that it's 185, <laughs> which may, may, may not be true. Woohoo! Right, we have a little bit of filament coming through. So let's uh, try and print something. I should have uh, levelled the bed before trying this. <laughs> uh, error, max temp. Right. Okay, we have a problem. Which uh, it's too late in the day to even begin to think about. Okay, that was uh, months ago, actually round about six months ago, during which time I have been without a 3D printer and it's really held back an awful lot of pro projects that I really, really want to get done. Um, so I'm pleased, I'm more than pleased to announce I now have a working Ender 3. Um, but uh, apart from the hot end issue, which wasn't solved at that point, um, there were other issues. <laughs> After I'd done the video where I announced that I'd broken the end of three, I, I got a lot of feedback from people who actually know what they're doing, which is, is, has been so invaluable. I just couldn't have worked through it without those comments. So thank you guys. Too numerous to mention by name, but uh, I really do appreciate it. And so the, the, the two most common things that people said were uh, check the voltage of the heater cartridge and probably there's a burnt out MOSFET on the main board so that would mean replace the main board uh, so yeah um, and they were right on both counts both of those things had happened so the heater cartridge that I'd got as part of that Winsin kit was 12 volt and the Ender 3 runs on 24 volt so you know if you put 24 volts <laughs> somebody's whatsapping me if you put 24 volts through a 12 volt thing it's going to get hot very quickly and possibly catch fire this is not good so that's what was happening and once I checked that then I bought some 24 volt heater cartridges and they worked so that, that was cool, but um, what still wasn't working was was the mainboard issue. Metal oxide semiconductor field effect. Oh, for f**k's sake! So a MOSFET uh, is a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, and um, I, I can't exactly understand what that means, <laughs> um, but it's important in regulating the voltage around the mainboard, I think. Uh, anyway, so that was uh, that was blown, and you can't actually. Well, I can't replace a MOSFET. Uh, you have to replace the whole board. And looking around, I came across the uh, well, an upgrade, and this was through Teaching Tech, Michael Laws. Thank you, who coincidentally had done a video on upgrading an Ender 3 with uh, this board, which is MKS Gen V 1.4. And so I bought one of those and also had to buy stepper drivers separately. Uh, so what looked like a bargain, you know, wasn't so much. And uh, also, well, I was going to do a whole video on how I installed it, but um, it was inconclusive. Well, it failed. I couldn't make it work. So um, that didn't happen. But um, basically this board, it's bigger than the Ender 3. Um, Melzi Creality 1.1.3 which I've broken um, but it was okay I would just have to print a bigger enclosure for it if I could get it to work for various reasons it's it's not a direct plug and play you know equivalence there are there's a couple of pins 5 volt out pins that you need to connect the fans to and then you need to configure Marlin to know about that and uh, that's where I came unstuck because um, I've never I've never done a Marlin configuration, and um, yeah, it's probably easy, but uh, wasn't easy enough for me. <laughs> so then I thought, well, I'm being silly. I'll just get another Melzi Creality, 
1.1.3. So I went looking and it turns out there's a 1.1.4, which is a slight upgrade, which um, is better. It's got thermal runaway protection on it and um, some other stuff, silent steppers and things. Uh, so I got one of those and that is a direct like for like plug and play and voila it worked beautifully so um so that's where we're at so that was the mosfet problem sorted but we still had the hot end problem with the uh, the winsin all metal replacement really wasn't working I, you know I, I could get filament to go through but then it would clog um and uh I don't know, it, it was it, it just wasn't happening. So I had this brainwave of going back to the original hot end and just, you know, with a new um, heater block. So that's what I've done. And honestly, guys, uh, after all that, it's, it's working really, really well. But um, the, the, that wasn't the, those weren't the only two problems along the way. I broke that limit switch and had to replace that. Um, I broke the part cooling fan by over over enthusiastic use of a heat gun to try and loosen the nozzle. Uh, so I actually melted part of the fan, which is brilliant. So that's a replacement. Uh, although the the little blower duct underneath isn't because well it's not causing a problem, so it'll it'll do for now. And then finally, just abandoned that um, so-called insulating cotton and capped on tape crap on the heater block and uh, replaced it with silicon sock, which just, you know, you assemble the block, get it all nice and tight and aligned, and then you pop the silicon on. Uh, a genius, absolute genius. So that's that. What else was there? the processor cooling fan which is attached to the the lid um, I did manage to disconnect one of those wires and had to re-solder that on and um, you know I do think those things are awful just you know a little flimsy solder joint on, on something that's going to take a bit of stress if you're taking the lid off on that um, not not great engineering not engineering at all it's just a clutch anyway I'm wittering um, I have fixed my Ender 3, a happy bunny me. <laughs> and look, so these, these are the first prints that I did. This first one, okay, that is dreadful. And, it, you know, there's no layer adhesion there at all. Um, second one, and also I'd forgotten all the temperatures for, um, for the nozzle and the bed and things. So this, this was closer, that's pretty good. Uh, this one, it, this is a model that I've, I've actually modified the eyes and the nose to make them more prominent. But that print, uh, that is um, that is as good, if not better, than anything I've ever printed before. Uh, and you know, the prints I'm getting now are superb. So, yes, all's well that ends well. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it, subscribe, etc. And thanks for watching, and I will see you next time with more 3D printed goodies.